Uh, this case in Pennsylvania, who would have thought that Sharia law will be implemented in an American courtroom above the Constitution of the United States? You know, we've been sounding the alarm about something like this happening, and it's been happening over the years, but this is the latest example. And this case was when a Halloween parade um, uh, happening where a man dressed like a zombie pope and another man dressed like a zombie Muhammad were walking in the parade. Attending the parade was a Muslim man with his son enjoying the parade. When the Muslim man saw that this American person walking around with a zombie Muhammad costume, he was very offended. He attacked the American man, assaulted him. There were people that took video of the attack, and a police officer showed up and wrote a report. The American man went to court and sued the, the Muslim man for the assault. The judge sitting at the case happened to be a Muslim judge. He not only um, condemned the American man for dressing as a zombie Muhammad, he held up a Quran and proceeded to tell uh, the courtroom that he was a Muslim judge, and he proceeded to tell the American man that if you lived in a Muslim country, you will be uh, beheaded for, for doing what you did. Well, of course, I mean, this is why we live in an American country, for goodness sake, you know. Um, and then he continued to tell the American man that um, uh, he offended the sensibilities of uh, the Muslims, that this is exactly why people overseas call us the ugly Americans, because we are insensitive to other people and other cultures. And he proceeded to tell the people attending the courtroom uh, about the religion of Islam, uh, how Muslims think, how they believe, uh, what it's all about. And basically the judge refused to allow the video to be presented as evidence in the court case. And he acquitted the Muslim man who attacked the American man, who happened to be an atheist, by the way. Um, and here we are defending his right because in America we have freedom of expression. Um, and the, the judge proceeded to tell the man, he threw basically the case out of court, and he told him that, um, uh, that he will not find the Muslim man guilty of assault because the Muslim man was justified in his attack. Uh, even though the Muslim man said that he did the attack as well because he wanted to teach his son, his nine-year-old son attending the parade with him, that he wanted to teach his son to stand up and defend his religion. And what type of an example we are setting, Janice, by this attack oh. where a Muslim man teaching his young American son that it is okay to commit violence and assault somebody else when you are offended when someone says anything that offends you. How different is that than the barbarics in Afghanistan killing over 35 people because of the burning of the Koran? This is happening mm -hmm. in America today. Wow. Brigitte, this story out of Pennsylvania is wrong on so many levels. First of all, uh, talk about the inequity here. This is not a level playing field. That's one of the reasons I take umbrage with stories like this. I, I notice nobody's complaining about the zombie pope. Apparently just the zombie Mohammed was a problem. Number two, it, he literally used his position as a judge. And I find it interesting that the atheist must have been crawling in his skin as this was happening, that he was, I'll use their word, proselytizing in the courtroom, talking about the tenets of the beliefs of of Islam. If a Christian, born-again Christian judge had started talking about what he believed in the classroom, you know that story would be splattered all over the front pages of the New York Times. Exactly. But apparently it's perfectly all right for him to be able to do it in a courtroom. Then the idea of role modeling to your child that you defend your religion by battery and assault yes. is absolutely stunning. So is the atheist going to appeal this? I mean, is the story done? The end? Oh, no, I am sure you have not heard the last of this story. This story is going to, this, this case is going to be appealed without a doubt. Um, what, what is so concerning, Janet, and you and I have talked about this before on the show, is that this is not the first time we are seeing this uh, Sharia law uh, creeping into American courtrooms. The, the, the case in Pennsylvania was just the latest in over 51 documented cases already where Sharia law, Islamic law, has been used in American courtroom above the Constitution of the United States. 
Now, when we started talking about this, you know, a couple of years ago, people used to say, you know, I don't believe this. Maybe this is exaggerated. Maybe it doesn't happen. You know, maybe these people, you know, this is the right-wing conspiracy to just put fear in people's hearts. But when you start seeing stories today like this, that's even covered in the mainstream media, you start thinking to yourself, how did we get to this point? This is so important for Americans to understand that unless we educate ourselves about this issue and unless we take action, nothing is going to change. And I want to direct people at this point to our website, actforamerica.org. We have a petition on our website asking people about whether they would like to make sure there are firewalls put up in their state to stop the advancement of Sharia law. We have a bill called American Laws for American Courts that we have already started presenting in different states. We already passed it in three states, in Tennessee, in Louisiana, and in Arizona, where, where laws in those states, court, courthouses in those states, will not be allowed to judge any case but with the Constitution of the United States. No other law, no other point of view would be considered. We are now seeing how much support we have nationwide. If you want to see this law being presented in your state, American Laws for American Courts, I encourage you to go to our website and add your name and tell us what state you're from so we can focus our effort and our energy in working with your elected officials in your state to make sure we introduce this law and pass it in your state. Uh, I'm glad to tell you, Janet, that right now we have this law introduced in 20 states across the nation. We mm. believe it will be passed this legislative session in at least six states. We need people to sign their name. We need people to join us. If they want to stop and put up a firewall to Sharia Allah being considered in your state courtroom. Wow. Brigitte, uh, there are so many questions I want to ask you based on what you just said. Let me just turn back the hands of time a little bit. Act for America was very involved in Oklahoma, where they tried to do exactly what you said. And by the way, one would think after hearing this unbelievable, almost incomprehensible story coming out of Pennsylvania, that you can see why there has been a movement to say, no, 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 no. American jurisprudence is predicated on American law. You don't want to judge ever. Ever, if you know anything about Sharia law, and if you love the concepts of liberty and inalienable rights, that's mutually exclusive to the concepts enshrined in Sharia. They, they, they cannot possibly coexist. So one would think, given the case out of Pennsylvania as the backdrop, movements like yours, where you're trying to see these kinds of bills passed and made the law of the state, would be war- warmly welcomed and widely embraced. And yet what happened in Oklahoma, Brigitte, is people said it was discriminatory, it was bigoted on its face, it was argumentative, it was punitive toward the Islamic community. How are you going to prevent in Tennessee, Louisiana, Arizona, and the 20 other states where this is in, how are you going to prevent that same kind of backlash? Because you hear the story in Pennsylvania, you think, no, it's not discriminatory. It's common sense. Because what we are introducing is a different bill than it was introduced in Oklahoma. The law that we are introducing, which passed two years ago and has not been challenged in either state, neither Tennessee, neither Louisiana or Arizona, is because it mentions only American laws for American courts, but it does not mention the word Sharia. Because Ah. the bill that we wrote, American laws for American courts, is bulletproof. It does not identify one religion. It does not identify one international law. It only discusses that any other law that contradicts the Constitution of the United States will not be considered. The problem that the legislators in Oklahoma did, and they wrote it without consulting with us, is that they wrote the word Sharia in the bill that they introduced in Oklahoma, and this is why the judge was able to strike it down. Now, Uh what happened in Oklahoma was a perfect example to, uh, was a good opportunity to, to teach people about what Sharia law is all about. Because a lot of people learned what Sharia law was all about, and this is why we saw over 70% of the people support it. Kiki, you're in Illinois. Thank you so much for joining in. Tell me your thoughts on what Brigitte has been saying. Oh, my goodness. First of all, thanks for taking my call. I'm a Nigerian, Janet. I know what this Muslim extremist can do. Mm. I thought I'll never see the day. In an American court, can you imagine? Americans need to wake up. We need to eat this time. I, you know, I cannot stress this enough. Look at what Boko Haram 
is doing mm, to Christians yes. in, my, in my country. Yes. Oh, my, you know, my stomach is turning, Janet. Our forefathers were torn in their graves. Pennsylvania, I mean, who's, who sworn that judge in? My goodness. Americans need to wake up, Janet. I cannot stress it enough. We need yeah. prayer. This is a very terrible time. May God help us. Yes. Kiki, thank you so much. And please know that so many of us are praying for the Nigerian people right now with Boko Haram. It's just a terrible, terrible situation. I got another report yesterday from Compass Direct about more Christians that were killed. So thank you for that. Brigitte, this goes to exactly what you were saying. And and let me just stop for a moment and say this. Opposing the institution and the enshrining of Sharia law in the annals of America's courtrooms is not saying that you cannot at the same time love those who are still following Islam and love them to Jesus Christ. It's not an either or. We can do both. And I think sometimes when people say, well, you know, it it sounds like we're not loving our Muslim friends that way. That's not the point. Yes, we can absolutely love them. But that does it's, you know, Christians are capable of doing all kinds of things. We can love our Muslim friends and hopefully help them come to know Jesus as their personal savior. But by the same token, it doesn't mean that you've been silenced in the marketplace and you can't speak against the enshrining of Sharia law. In fact, Brigitte, Sharia law would not allow us to be able to go into the marketplace and share our faith openly. That would be abhorrent. Sharia, would it not? Exactly, exactly, Janet. And this has nothing to do with love. This has to do with law. Our founding fathers, like Kiki said, are turning in their graves. What made America great, Janet, and the reason why people flock from all over the world, like Kiki from Nigeria and I from Lebanon, and cross oceans to get here, is we are attracted to this amazing land where the laws of this land, the Constitution that our founding fathers, with their great wisdom, wrote a document that because they wanted to see America different than any other place in the world, different than Europe, different than any country they had left. And they wanted to make sure that we have freedom of expression, that we have freedom of religion, that we have freedom of speech, freedom that most people in most countries dream of having. You know, in my country of Lebanon, if I stand on the side of the street and try to express myself, you know, wear a costume, um, you know, protesting somebody, I would be killed. This is why people like me flock to America. And we come here because we want to make sure we escape lands like this, and we want to make sure that our children will have the opportunity to live in a nation where everyone is equal under the law and everyone abides by the Constitution of the United States. We did not come to America to watch uh, radicalism come to our country and try to topple our Constitution using judges as useful idiots, as tools in the hand of people with an agenda trying to basically harm our Constitution. People think it cannot happen here. It's already happening here. And this yes. is why we must wake up not only to honor the legacy of our founding fathers and what they have created for us, but also for the sake of our children. We owe it to them to stand up and make a difference. Mm. 1-877-548-3675. Lisa, you're in Idaho. I thank you so for joining us. Your thoughts, please. Thank you for taking my call. Um, Mine was just a comment um, in that I think uh, the way Brigitte explained how the, the bill is written is just brilliant because what actually came to mind um, was also some of the things recently that I've read uh, that the administration is in support of in regards to UN um, legislation that would, would basically, under, I feel, undermine our sovereignty in putting us uh, in kind of the ruling of, of the UN. And so yeah. uh, where, it was meant, where Brigitte mentioned that um, the writing was not calling out Sharia specifically, um, I think also can, aff- can uh, help us in support uh, against of some of the things that are uh, we're having to kind of fall in line or the administration would like us to abide by international law. That's an excellent point. In fact, I was just thinking, Brigitte, as you've introduced these and you're seeing movement now in 20 states, as you just testified to us, this would be a way one would hope to protect us from some very egregious treaties that are floating around that perhaps when the United Nations decides to pass some sort of international law or there's an international uh, criminal court or some other entity beyond the pale of American jurisprudence, that it's a hedge of protection for us just straight across the board, isn't it? Exactly. And this is why we're trying as much as 
as fa- we're working as fast as we can and as hard as we can to pass these legislations in America. But I have to tell you, our enemy has woken up. CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, which is a front organization for Hamas, the terrorist organization in the United States, are fighting us tooth and nail. And this is why it's important that Americans now come together and organize and make sure we pass these bills and make sure that our elected officials get a very clear message from their constituents that we want you to make sure that the Constitution will be the law of the land and will be the only document that will be uh, that cases will be judged by. Uh, this yes. is why I encourage people to go to our website, sign up to receive our emails, because what we are doing is we are sending emails when the bill is coming down for a vote in a specific state. We are sending emails out to our members the day before, urging them to call their elected officials voting on the bill. We give you the name of the elected official, who is the sponsor, what does the bill say, what's the number of the bill. So when you call your elected official, you are truly being effective and being a voice protecting your community. If you are not signed up on our emails, you will not be notified. You will not know when to call or who to call or what's happening in your state. 